Diseases of the nervous system can frequently cause dysfunction of urination, known as neurogenic bladder, and frequent urinary tract infections. But thankfully, there are many things you can do to prevent them, which I'll discuss in this video, and I have some timestamps if you want to skip ahead, and references below. Let's have some fun. One caveat is that the definition of a urinary tract infection is invasion of the urinary tract, such as the urethra, bladder, or kidneys, by a microorganism, usually bacteria, causing inflammation and symptoms, and common symptoms include irritation while urinating and fever. This should be discriminated from invasion of the urinary tract by bacteria not causing symptoms, known as asymptomatic bacteriuria, which is often harmless and does not necessarily require any treatment or prevention whatsoever. By the way, I'm a neurologist, not a urologist, so please talk to your own provider for medical advice, though I want to help thank my friend who's a urologist who did help me prepare this video. By the way, my name is Brandon Bieber, and I make videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications, and if you appreciate this video, please click like. The core cause of frequent urinary tract infections is poor drainage of the bladder and stagnant, overfilled bladders, causing urine to stagnate and serve as a nidus for bacterial growth. And people with spinal cord injuries, regardless of the cause, can have a phenomenon known as detrusor sphincter dyssynergia. In other words, the bladder is contracting, but the sphincter muscles aren't really relaxing, so the bladder is sort of overfilled. And of course, people can also have symptoms of frequent urination, and it can be very annoying to have to urinate all the time, so people subconsciously drink less water, which can be a problem because our natural prevention of UTIs is essentially flushing out the bladder and urethra constantly. The result can be an elevation of what is called post-void residual, which is the residual volume of urine in the bladder after urination. Normal is less than 50 milliliters, but people with neurological diseases can have volumes over 100 milliliters, even greater than 300 milliliters, which is definitely a risk factor for frequent UTIs. The bladder distends, and that can disrupt the blood flow to the bladder wall, which is part of the natural immune response. And also, there's a naturally protective glycosaminoglycan layer over the epithelial cells, which is then disrupted. Some people with neurogenic bladder use catheters, and any kind of foreign body introduced in the bladder can be a source of infection. And some people, for instance, people with multiple sclerosis, may be taking immunosuppressant drugs, which increase the risk of infections overall. So we'll start with some conservative options that everyone can can do. And the number one piece of advice I could give to you is to drink a lot of water and stay very well hydrated so you produce a lot of urine and flush out your bladder and urethra. That's the number one piece of advice. It also helps to urinate more frequently. Holding urine for long periods of time causes the, the bladder to expand and causes some of the problems I talked about in the prior slide. If you notice that UTIs are caused by intercourse, you could try having both partners shower and clean the area beforehand and then urinating immediately afterwards words to flush out the bacteria. Now, it's kind of gross to think about, but it turns out that a lot of UTIs are caused by your own feces. So a lot of pathogenic bacteria like E. coli and Enterococcus grow in the colon. And so it turns out that constipation is a big factor in UTIs. And treating constipation was found to reduce UTIs by about 29% in a study in people with spinal cord injury. So eating a lot of fiber, drinking a lot of water, and sometimes taking medication for constipation patient can be helpful. And women, when they're urinating and going number two, should wipe front to back to avoid contaminating the urethra. Again, it's kind of gross, but that is what causes UTIs in many cases. And also trying to keep the perineal area clean and dry. They're actually commercial wipes, kind of similar to baby wipes that may prevent UTIs. And it may be helpful to kind of avoid latex or other forms of underwear that trap fluids and instead go with cotton. And if you do use a urinary pad, change it frequently to avoid irritating the skin. Now, there are many different supplements purported to prevent urinary tract infections, and none of them have definitive evidence, but they tend to be relatively safe, so there's little harm in trying them. The most popular by far is cranberry juice or cranberry extract, and the idea is that E. coli bacteria, shown in this electron micrograph, have these projections, or P. fimbria, that attach to epithelial cells, so they attach to the bladder wall and cause infection. And cranberry proanthrocyanidins have this property where they 
block the adhesion of these P. fimbria, hopefully, hopefully preventing infection. And there are a gazillion different studies, and they all show different things, and I'll show a few. For example, this is a six-month randomized trial of cranberry tablets after spinal cord injury versus placebo, and you're looking at a survival curve for freedom from urinary tract infection, and you can see the lines are right on top of each other, so absolutely no benefit to the treatment. However, this very similar study, another randomized double-blind study in spinal cord injury, showed a 70% reduction in urinary tract infections, and you can see that the number of UTIs was lower in every single month over a six-month period. You can see cranberry tablets in black versus the placebo represented by the shaded bars. There was another study in children with neurogenic bladder, and you can see that the children receiving placebo had 0.7 urinary tract infections per year on average versus 0.45 in those receiving cranberry, a 36% reduction. For some reason, this was more effective in girls, but ineffective in boys for unknown reasons. Another very similar but perhaps less well-known supplement is D-mannose, which is the sugar depicted to the right that is not metabolized by the body and is excreted into the urine and also binds to bacterial fimbria, preventing them from attaching to the bladder wall. And this has some evidence as well. For instance, this is a study in multiple sclerosis. It's open label, unrandomized, in 22 people with multiple sclerosis who had recurrent urinary tract infections, either three or more in a year or two or more in a six-month period, and they used D-mannose powder 1.5 grams twice daily for 16 weeks, and they found that urinary tract infections decreased both in the catheter users and the non-users, and you can see those that didn't use catheters had about 0.1 UTI per month, so perhaps about one per year on average, which is a very significant reduction, although this is not a randomized study. Another interesting option is the pharmaceutical formulation methanamine hippurate, under the trade names Hiprex or Urex, which is a drug, but it's considered to be extremely safe, and it's essentially excreted into the urine and generates hippocuric acid, which acidifies the urine and makes it more difficult to bacteria to grow. It turns out that the pH of the urine is a factor, and drugs that alkalize the urine should be avoided in people with frequent urinary tract infections. The typical dose is one gram twice a day. However, although there's some evidence that this may reduce the symptoms or duration of a urinary tract infection. I had difficulty finding good evidence in neurogenic bladder. This was a six-month randomized trial of hip rex after spinal cord injury, and you can see there was no difference in the rate of UTIs between hip rex and placebo. Something else that's been tried is probiotics, which may regulate the gastrointestinal tract and prevent the growth of pathogenic bacteria. However, there's not great evidence. This is a randomized trial of probiotics versus placebo in spinal cord injury, and there was a trend towards fewer UTIs. This is the dotted, the solid line compared to the dotted line, the placebo, but this was not statistically significant. There are also some other conservative options. For instance, nasturtium, the flower depicted to the right, horseradish, bearberry leaf extract, and the amino acid L-methionine, but none of them have definitive evidence. Now, this next treatment isn't used routinely because it has various drawbacks, but prophylactic or preventative antibiotics can reduce recurrent urinary tract infections. The reason we don't recommend them all the time is because they can pro promote antibiotic resistance and future antibiotic-resistant UTIs. Also, antibiotics taken on a chronic basis can cause dysregulation of the normal flora in the gastrointestinal tract and sometimes other infections. However, they can be effective for some people. The typical preventative dose taken on a daily basis is one-fourth of the treatment dose, the dose used to treat a urinary tract infection. Some common antibiotics used would be Cipro and Bactrim. So for instance, if you use double-strength Bactrim twice daily to treat a UTI, you would use single-strength Bactrim once daily. And there was, in fact, a randomized trial of prophylactic antibiotics in people with spinal cord injury doing intermittent self-catheterization. And in the treatment group, there were on average 1.3 symptomatic UTIs versus 2.6 in the placebo group. That represents a 48% reduction, which was statistically significant. Now, unfortunately, some people continue to have frequent urinary tract infections despite conservative measures, and some people with really bad neurogenic bladder with a significant post-void residual volume of the bladder, 100, 200, 300, or more milliliters left in the bladder after urination, some people may benefit from intermittent clean self-catheterization. And it's sort of counterintuitive, but 
inserting a foreign body through the urethra and into the bladder may actually reduce the rate of urinary tract infections because again, it's that backup and stagnation of urine that really causes UTIs. A lot of people are resistant to this treatment, but there are many convenient disposable catheters that are easy to use and very convenient, and they may not only reduce UTIs, but they may also alleviate a lot of the other symptoms of neurogenic bladder, such as having to urinate all the time or urinate frequently at night. Now, of course, we always want to try to avoid indwelling catheters, such as a Foley catheter, but some people, perhaps due to other neurological problems, are unable to do clean intermittent self-catheterization or they don't have someone else to help them do it and they may need an indwelling catheter and for those people who need it on a long-term basis a surgical procedure to get a suprapubic catheter where the catheter is inserted above the pubic bone into the bladder may help to reduce urinary tract infections although a, an indwelling catheter is not ideal. And as I said, clean technique is very important to prevent introduction of bacteria into the bladder. And so using clean technique when using or changing catheters, washing your hands, using gloves and sterile technique, and cleaning the area of the urethra prior to use is very important. If you have an indwelling catheter, you have to change it frequently. And there are other procedures such as catheter irrigation and other things that a urologist can do to help prevent infections. And there are actually special catheters treated with non-pathogenic E. coli to sort of grow and outcompete the pathogenic E. coli that cause UTIs, a very interesting technology. The last thing I'll mention is bladder Botox. So Botox is a paralytic agent which can be injected into the bladder through a cystoscope which is introduced into the urethra. Now what you're looking at are the typical injections into the detrusor muscle of the bladder for overactive bladder, and this can actually cause urinary tract infections by causing more urinary retention. However, there are ways of doing the injection more into the sphincter muscles down here to prevent bladder retention and help with drainage, potentially preventing urinary tract infections, although incontinence can be a side effect. So please post in the comments, do you have frequent urinary tract infection and which tips have helped for you and have I left anything out or do you have any suggestions for future videos?